Do you ever get the feeling that your computer is lying to you? Well, it is all the time. Let's take a look. Welcome back everybody to another video where I try to help you become better programmers or students of computer science and engineering. And specifically today, I wanna to talk about memory, how things work under the hood, because your computer is doing some kind of sneaky stuff that you may not be aware of. Today's video is brought to you by all of the wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon. A big thanks for all of your support. Also, if you're new to the channel, Patreon is where you can get source code for all my videos and access to my monthly virtual office hours. Now let's take a look at some code. So today I wanna to start with a super simple program, just a hello world style program with a global variable X up here. We're gonna set it equal to zero. And down here, I'm going to print out both the value of X and its address, because I really wanna look at where things are being put in memory. I also have a really simple make file over here, nothing fancy, but if you're new to make, if this is at all confusing, I do have some videos about make, so check them out if you're not sure about that. But if we come down here and we compile our code, you can see it compiles just fine. And if we run it, you can see that X equals zero and that it's at address 404034. Okay, now the question I wanted to start with and I wanna talk about here is, the question of where did this address come from? So if we run it again, you notice that it's, the address doesn't change ever. So I can run this as many times as I want and I'm getting 404034. And if we run object dump really quick and look at the symbol table for this program, you can see that right here, you can see that 404034 is set here in the binary for X. So our variable X, which is four bytes and is placed at 404034 in memory. So you can see that the address is actually baked into the executable. It was determined by the linker and it's never going to change no matter how many times I run this program or if I copy it to another machine. And if you're new to this, that may raise some concerns because like, what if I run this program twice at the same time? So I'm gonna do that, but before I do it, let's just come in here and change the program because I want it to take a little bit longer and I want it to actually change the value of X because that will help us kind of see what's going on a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna come down here and make a for loop Let's go through five times. Doesn't really matter, just completely arbitrary. And then each time through the loop, I'm going to increment my value of X and let's also call sleep of one. So we'll sleep a second. I just wanna slow things down a little bit. And then in order to use sleep, I need to come up here and include unistandard.h. Okay, so now we can still compile it. That should compile just fine. And if we run it, you can see that it does the same thing as before, except now the value of X is changing, but you notice that that address is still not changing. I mean, it, it's a different address than we had before, but if I run it multiple times, the address is baked into the executable. The point is it's not changing from run to run. Okay, now say that I decide to run three of these at once. So I can do that from the terminal just like this. Now this is going to start all of these programs running at the same time and they're gonna run concurrently. And then while we run it, we're just gonna observe its behavior. Now, the first thing you notice when this runs is that the address of X is the same for every running process, okay? It makes sense because it's baked into the executable, but you know, for a new programmer, you might think, hey, they're all reading and writing to the same location in memory, right? But then we also notice if we look at the values of X as they're incrementing, they're incrementing as though they're each dealing with their own value of X, right? If they were all accessing the same location in memory, the same physical int, I would expect this number to eventually get up here, well, definitely higher than five and probably close to 15. So what's going on? Well, the reality is that the computer is lying to you. These addresses we're printing out are not the actual physical addresses where these variables are located. They are virtual or sometimes we call them logical addresses. You see each running process on a modern operating system has its own virtual address space, which is normally separate from the memory of all the other processes. And of course you can set up shared memory and I have a few videos on how to do that. But by default, each process's memory is only visible by that process. So the operating system keeps processes memory separate from each other. They can't see each other's memory and they can't access it. So when your program says, hey, I wanna access address 40403C, well, your processor's memory management unit takes that logical address and maps it to a physical address. And we have no idea what that physical address is, but this is really useful because it allows the operating system 
to when it needs to, to move your memory around if, say, it needs to make space for another process to run. And of course, there are a few different ways that the operating system could translate these addresses, and we're going to save that for a future video, a future lesson. So also, depending on what operating system and compiler version you're using, your results from this example might actually look a little different from mine. For example, let's say that I take this exact same code and I switch. I've been doing this in Linux, but let's say I switch back to Mac OS and let's clean it and recompile it. Now you'll notice if I run it, just like I did before, oops, let's run three again. So if we run this before, if we run this just the same way we ran it before, you notice that now each program is actually getting a different address. The addresses aren't the same, and you might at this point be thinking, aha, Macs don't use virtual memory, but that's not true. They still do. What you're seeing here is called address space layout randomization, and it's done to make programs more secure because a lot of software attacks are based on knowing where things are going to be in memory. So if we move stuff around randomly, then it's going to be harder for people to attack this program. And this is generally an option in your compiler that you can turn on or you can turn off. So just, just to give you a sense for how we would do that, if we take my compile command here, and let's say that I didn't want it to do this, I can just tell the linker and use this no pi option. And what that means, pi is just short for position independent executable. So I'm basically compiling it by telling it do not generate a position independent executable, which will effectively turn off, it'll tell Clang not to produce this randomization effect. So now if we run it again like this, now you see that we are back to the same functionality we saw with my original demonstration. It's a different address, of course, different operating system. They're handling memory slightly different, but it's consistent, the behavior is consistent across the three running processes. But so obviously this isn't the whole story, but I hope it gives you a better idea about how memory works, what virtual memory means when you hear people say that. And I hope that helps you in future projects and classes. So like this video if it was helpful, subscribe if you don't wanna miss future videos. Check us out on Patreon if you wanna take the relationship to the next level and I'll see you next week.